Greetings in the name of our wonderful Lord. This is Tony Broom Ministries, presenting the old-time teaching and preaching from God's Word. This time, we're in Psalms 74. The title of the sermon is, When Holiness Leaks Out of the House. I want you to picture in your mind a balloon filled with holiness helium gas. As it flies over Psalm 74, it finds itself in deep trouble when its holiness helium starts leaking out. If you take a balloon that's got helium in it and starts leaking out, it's not much fun for the party. That's what you really call a party pooper. A flat balloon that doesn't do anything. Regretfully, this real life story is much worse than a deflated or burst balloon. Isaiah describes it in chapter 64, verse 11 of his book. Our holy and our beautiful house, where our fathers praise thee, is burned up with fire, and all our pleasant things are laid waste. This is what happens when holiness leaks out of the house. Our beautiful, our holy house, where our fathers praise your name, is now burned up with fire. It's like sounding an alarm. It's like ringing a bell. It's like making some noise and causing somebody to pay attention. It's like the house is on fire and the old man is still caught up in the football game that he can't leave the television even though the house is on fire. He says, don't turn it off, don't turn it off. He's fixing to burn to death. That's the way it is in our world in general and even in the church house. We think that things are all right and I thank God for a good church. I thank God for a praying church. I thank God for what has happened around here this morning as church like church ought to be. God is moving. God is moving in many mighty ways. You can have everything from the praise course, the warm up song that we had today which represents the new music. And then you have the old hymns. A little bit of everything. Can't beat it with a stick. It's good to be a part of that. It's good to be a part of what God is doing. But our church world in general, holiness is leaking out of the house. I'm afraid sometimes it's more than a leak. Sometimes it's a flood. If we don't stop the flood, the balloon is going to deflate all the way. Holiness will be gone from the house and we'll be like Isaiah as we cry out. Our beautiful and our holy house where our fathers praise your name is now burned up with fire and all our pleasant things are laid waste. The good things that God had given them had been allowed to be taken away from them. God didn't do it, but the enemy did. It got to the point where God had to send them into captivity because they had sinned against God. Psalms 74 is titled Mastiel of Asaph. He was David's choir leader who was responsible for sounding the cymbals in praise to God. He would sing that song like we sung today, Holy, Holy, Holy Crash! And he would crash the cymbals and when it got to the point where there would be a point for exclamation, he would crash the cymbals and that's what Psalm 150 means when it says praise him with the cymbals, praise him with the high sounding or loud crashing cymbals and they praise God and they bang those things out. That's the danging we need today. A lot of danging in this world. Dang me, take a rope and hang me, but I'm telling you one thing. We need some danging for God. We need some ringing out of the cymbals. Paul said, if I don't have love, it's like a gonging cymbal, but we need to gong some cymbals for Christ and bang them out for the Lord. You say, well, I don't like all that loud music. David is the one who said, let us play loudly with a skillful and loud noise to bang the cymbals out and praise God. This poetic psalm helps us to contemplate our sanctuary surroundings and perhaps gasp a childhood question of mine. 
what's coming off here? Us kids and our mother were all packed up in a doodle bug. She was driving that doodle bug and this old bald-headed guy, who probably had a lot of hair back then, was in the back seat, had my two bare feet up, one on one side of her head and the other on the other side of her head. And the other kids were in the car and all of a sudden this car right in front of us decides he or she wants to stop. My mother, my baby sister said, Mama! That's what girls do, you know. Mama! Like, what are you going to do? Mama just hits the shoulder of the road. Doodlebug goes off the shoulder. And old Tony boy says, what's coming off here? <laughs> That's what we should say now. What's coming off here? What is the world doing to the church? What's the devil trying to do to the church? What's coming off here? Oh God, why hast thou cast us off? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? It looks like God has cast us off. That's the condition that the church world finds themselves in. Oh God, why hast thou cast us off forever? Why doth thine anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Sin had come in, which opens the door for the enemy and God's judgment. We cannot allow sin to reign in the house. Sin and holiness can't exist in the same house. Because one of them is going to take over and the other is going to leak out. When holiness leaks out of the house, it's a good sign or a bad sign, whichever way you want to look at it, that sin has been allowed to come in. God has to pass judgment because sin comes in. Remember thy congregation which thou hast purchased of old, the rod of thine inheritance which thou hast redeemed, this Mount Zion wherein thou hast dwelt, this is the place that you have chosen to put your name there. Lord, remember the places that you have blessed. Remember the house of God. Things certainly aren't like they used to be. Amen. We were told, and I say we before Brother Tony was actually a part of it, but the South Henderson Church was told, you've got to leave that Mill Hill mentality if you're going to have anything worth to ever come of you. You've got to leave it down there on Carolina Avenue. I'm afraid that ain't the only thing that was left down there on Carolina Avenue. The song said they tore the old country church down. They built a big new church in town with a steeple so high that it reaches the sky and pride has crept in where love should have been. They no longer kneel and pray in the good old-fashioned way. They just stand up there so very tall and proud. They don't sing about the cross or the blood that my Jesus lost in that big, big, big new church in town. There's nothing wrong with that church in town. It's the members who've let God down. If they'd humble themselves and pray, He would hear from heaven today in that big, big, big new church in town. It's not how big the church is. It's not how high the steeple is. It's where the heart is. When things are not like they used to be, it's not just because the building looks different. It's not just because whether it has stained glass windows or not. It's because of the condition of the heart of the people. Lift up thy feet unto the perpetual desolations. In other words, Lord, walk around here and see what's going on. God knows everything, but we have to talk to Him like folks have to talk sometimes. Even all that the enemy hath done wickedly in the sanctuary. The enemy has done some wicked things in the sanctuary, brothers and sisters. And we're living in a day now that people are expected to be able to live and do any way they want to, even in church, and how dare anybody to have the audacity to say anything about it. The praise chorus, look what the Lord has done, has been exchanged for a funeral song. Look what the devil has done. Thine enemies roar in the midst of the congregations. When Jesus walked this earth, when the devil roared in the congregation, he was cast out. 
when the man in the synagogue said, let us alone. What do we have to do with us? Have you come to destroy us before the time? He said, shut up and come out. When the devil roared in the congregation, he was cast out. When the devil roars in the congregation now, we put him on the board. We make some big star out of him. Thine enemies roar in the midst of thy congregation. They set up their signs, their ensigns for signs. In Hebrew, the base word is ot. The word ot means like a sign. It's a sign that signs and wonders. It's like a sign that you hold up. Just a common word for sign. They set up their ensigns for signs. English, ensigns for signs. In Hebrew, the word is the same word. Ot, the plural is otot. They set up ototam, their signs, for otot. Ototam otot is the way it's written. In other words, they set up their signs as signs, and this is the way it is, and nobody is supposed to question and say anything about it. This is a new age. This is the new sign. This is a new fangle jangle religion. The new is the way. The old is for naught. You ever heard that song, Trouble in the Amen Corner? Ira, you've got to stop your singing. It's messing up our choir. We only want the tunes that we have paid for. We only want what we have bought. The new ones are the rage. The old ones stand for naught. I'm glad I serve a God who says sing a new song to the Lord. He likes the new, He likes the old as long as it lifts up Jesus Christ. Amen. They have raised up and set up their ensigns for signs. A man was famous according as he had lifted up axes upon the thick trees. A lot of good has been done in God's house. They used to be known for how many trees they cut down and all this lumber and timber that they brought and the stones that they put in this temple. All the work that had gone into the temple. All the work that has gone into building God's house and making God's house what it is today. It didn't just start right here where it is. They had a lot of work and blood and sweat and tears and prayers that have gone into the church. Y'all don't want me to preach this morning, do you? There's a lot of good that has been done in the church. People were known, as it says here, by the cutting down of the thick trees. In other words, the work that you have done in the house of God. Sadly, the next few verses describe the desecration, desolation, and destruction of God's holy place by the enemy. You were famous. A man was famous according to the good that he has done, but now they break down the carved work thereof at once with axes and hammers. They're tearing it all down. All the good that has been done. We can see it in administrations. We can see it in administration take over in our government, and in one day, a man can sign a bunch of bills that was already made up for him and undo a whole lot of good. We can see it done in our physical government in this world. We can see it done in church. They, as it were, cutting down the things, or cutting down the carved things, not images and idols. They're cutting down the good things. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. And this is not the fire of the Holy Spirit. It's a bad kind of fire. Believers believe in the good kind of fire, the Holy Ghost fire. But there's also a hell devil fire. They have cast fire into thy sanctuary. They have defiled by casting down the dwelling place of thy name to the ground. In other words, they have desecrated, they have defiled the altar. Look around in many churches, the inspirations sing, and the altar can't be found. A Christian won't kneel with a sinner to pray, and they say they're heaven bound. If we'd live more like him and pray every day, the Spirit would descend. God's word will be heard, God's power will fall, and sinners will repent. We can see right now today, God will move. If we get in the place that we ought to be, He will move. He wants to move. 
We think sometimes the way things are, it gets dry. God doesn't want to do anything. No, God wants to. He's hankering to do it. He's chomping at the bits to do it. He wants to do it. It's not His fault that it's not being done. They said in their hearts, let us destroy them together. They have burned up all the synagogues of God in the land. So when they saw that one thing they could do bad and it wasn't anything much said about it, they said, well, let us do this too. We'll just burn up all the worship places of God in the land. We see not our signs, the same word, ots, otots, plural, ototenu, our signs. We don't see our signs. What is and what are our signs? The signs that point to holiness. The signs that point to righteousness. The signs that point to godliness. We don't see that in the church in large degree today. It's all about pleasing the culture. It's all about conforming to the culture. It's all about, and they get in these moods, in these rooms and committees, and they what can we do to reach our people for Jesus Christ? What can we do? How about carrying out the Great Commission? How about doing what God told you to do? You ain't got to have no meeting in no committee room. Say what you're going to do. All you got to do is just do what God said do. We don't see our signs. There is no more any prophet. The prophet, the one who would speak in tongues and prophesy. What's going to happen in our generation when the old saints of God die off? Who's going to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost? There ain't even no need to talk about no sanctification. You let God let Tony live. If he does. We're going to talk about sanctification. There's no more any prophet. Neither is there any among us that knows how long. Nobody has spiritual insight. We're going around like somebody's dragging us around by the ear. And we don't have the spiritual insight that we used to have. We've allowed the devil to take the edge off our hacks. The enemy has been somewhat successful in putting fear into the heart of the saints. Now I can't say all the words. You'll have to read in here on the sermon on your poppy's copy without getting too sloppy this morning. But You know what I'm talking about. The pandemic. They were successful in closing the churches down. They said, hmm, that worked pretty good. So they gauge this test run and prepare for the real kill the next time. If you think this has been bad enough, just see what they'll do and I hope, pray God it doesn't happen. But if it does happen, see what they try to do the next time. We are left scrambling to recover while lacking trust, power, and the supernatural. The enemy, like Daniel said, is trying his best to wear out the saints. Oh God, how long shall the adversary reproach? Shall the enemy blaspheme thy name forever? We wonder if it will ever end. Why withdrawest thou thy hand, even thy right hand? Pluck it out of thy bosom. God, you just got to do something. It looks like he's not doing anything. But there again, it's not his fault. He wants to move. He wants to put the enemy out. But he can't put the devil out on Sunday morning when we're playing with him on Saturday night. For God is my king of old, working salvation in the midst of the earth. I am going to trust God even when nothing else makes sense. He is still my king of old. He's still the one who works salvation. I may have to preach alone. I may have to stand all by myself, but I'm going to still stand for God. The next few verses are used to remind ourselves of God's faithfulness to us. Thou didst divide the sea by thy strength. Lord, you're the one who divided that Red Sea and let Israel cross over. You're the one who did all that. Thou breakest the heads of the dragons, that sea monster in Hebrew. In the waters, thou breakest the heads of Leviathan. You know Leviathan that Job talked about? The book Job talked about Leviathan. You broke his head in pieces and gave him to be meat to the people inhabiting the wilderness. 
We would never have known that unless this verse had told us, the only one in the Bible that told us about it. God will go through whatever He has to go through. The extreme that God will go through to supply the need of His people. He told Job, nobody can touch Leviathan. Nobody can do anything to him. If he sneezes, everybody been sneezing lately? <laughs> if Leviathan sneezes, it lights lamps up. Lamps of fire jump out of his mouth every time he sneezes. The scales of his body are so close together you can get no air between them. You throw a spear and air at him and ha ha ha, doesn't do anything to him. But God said the one who made him can approach to him. You try to open the bars of his mouth, you can't do it. But God said, I can do it. God gave him to me meat for the people inhabiting the wilderness. Thou didst cleave the fountain and the flood. Moses, speak to that rock. Water came out of that rock. Water from the rock is what I needed. The rock shelter in a weary land. Thou driedest up mighty rivers. That Jordan River, roll, Jordan, roll, roll, low, Jordan, roll. You can't roll against God. He split that Jordan River. Israel went into the promised land on dry ground. God had already done it to the Red Sea. If He can do it to the Red Sea, He can do it to the Jordan River. The day is thine. The night is also is thine. God said, let there be light. There was light. He divided light from the darkness. Light he called day, darkness he called night. All of it belongs to him. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Thou hast set all the borders of the earth. Thou hast made summer and winter. If you don't like winter, hold on, it'll be summertime. If you don't like summertime, hold on, it'll be wintertime. God made it all. Remember this, that the enemy hath reproached, O Lord, and that the foolish people have blasphemed thy name. So what if we have a hard time? So what if we even die? But now, Lord, this has gotten to the point to where your name is being blasphemed and put down. Your name is getting to the point like Sennacherib. God let Sennacherib run his mouth for a while. But when it got to the point where he was blaspheming the God of heaven, he was poking fun at the God of heaven, God said, you got to go, hoss. He put a hook in his nose and turned him back by the way he came. After slaying, with one angel of God slays 185,000. And then when he was worshiping in the house of his God, his own sons that came out of his bowels slew him. Don't tell me, you can't play with my God. Amen. Oh, deliver not the soul of thy turtle dove unto the multitude of the wicked. Forget not the congregation of thy poor forever. Nobody pays attention to the poor folks anymore. It doesn't matter what the people say. It doesn't matter whether the people of God have been putting money in the church for umpteen hundred years. It doesn't matter. we got a new way and a new day. They ain't paying nothing, but they got all to say so. You think millennials are supporting the church? Scratch your back again, honey. You know who's supporting the church? The widow's might. The same one that Jesus said in the beginning, she gave more than all the rest of them put together. I don't know how it happens. It can't happen in this world's economy. But I, we're not living on this world's economy. We're in God's economy. God, I know you can do something and I believe that you will. Have respect unto the covenant for the dark places of the earth are full of the habitations of cruelty. Your word is the answer to all this violence, all the corruption, all the evil that's going on. God, remember your covenant. God will not forget His covenant. God never has forgotten His covenant. Israel, we are the ones who've broken the covenant of God. He never forgot His covenant. Oh, let not the oppressed return ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise Thy name. You can make it all right again, Lord. I know You will. Arise, O oh God, plead Thine own cause. Remember how the foolish man reproaches Thee daily. Daily. It's a bombardment. Our sister was talking this morning about praying for her son. And it's the daughter, it's the son. It's just boom, boom, boom. There again, the evil one is trying to wear the saints out. 
You might wear me down, but praise God, you ain't going to wear me out because greater is He that is in me than He that's in the world. We need some relief. We about like Jerry now, just shoot up in here amongst us. Some of us got to have some relief. Forget not the voice of thine enemies. And he asked God, don't forget me, Lord. Forget not the voice of thine enemies. The tumult of those that rise up against thee increases continually. No matter how high the devil turns up the heat, it is nothing compared to the lake of fire where he's headed. As for us, it is still holiness or hell. We have to keep the power of Pentecost real and active in our life. Not allow the holiness helium of the house balloon to leak out or to become deflated. We cannot blame the preacher. We cannot blame the New Age. We cannot blame our wife. We cannot blame our husband. We cannot blame Washington. We have the Holy Ghost. We have the Word of God. We have Jesus. <laughs> Hebrews 12, 14, Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. When holiness leaks out of the house, all you've got is just a house. All you've got is just a flat balloon. A little bit of air in it. Maybe hot air, but that's all it is. And it won't do anything. But when you blow it up with holiness, helium, you've got something. You've got something that will rock the world and rule the devil. Amen. Father in heaven, thank you for this word. Thank you for Psalm 74. Thank you, Lord, that you have given us a picture today of what happens when holiness leaks out of the house. But it doesn't have to leak out of our house. It doesn't have to leak out of this church house. It doesn't have to leak out of our heart house. It doesn't have to leak out of the house of our life. Because Jesus, you're still Lord. You still have the power to help us to reach this generation for your name's sake. God, encourage us today. Send us forth in power and glory. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. This has been a sermon from Psalm 74 entitled, When Holiness Leaks Out of the House. Make sure that Jesus Christ is your Savior and you know Him as your Lord today. This has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.